Okay, so uh, welcome to um, the second part, uh, and this is marketing, and this is what we're going to cover. Um, this is what we covered last time, all the products in COVID, and if you want to look at the uh, former uh, webinar that I did on August 6th, you can just go to my YouTube channel, and you can either just Google Kathy Cross YouTube, or at the very end of this, uh, all the links to everything about me are there, and the link to the YouTube is there. So it's up right now, and you can watch that again if you wish. And basically what I talked about was COVID products, and I talked about five of them. And there are two groups that you, you know, basically want to help. One are long distance family, which are your best customers because they really need you. They're not there. And local families who really need you in COVID as well, but not as much. And both of them, how do they help uh, their older member uh, shelter in place? And if the older family member does uh, come down with COVID but doesn't want to go in the hospital, how do, you help, uh, how do you help them figure out what they do when they're recovering at home? And then if they went into the hospital and were lucky enough to recover, which a lot of people are doing now, um, uh, how do they handle post-hospitalization? Those two things are very different. And what I showed you the last time was how to develop five products to do that. You can review that, but um, so I always do this. Why can I do it? Uh, I can do it because I wrote the handbook of geriatric care manager with a whole bunch of my friends who are all retired now. Uh, the group is called the Weirdos. <laughs> I'm not sure I like, uh, but it's fun. We once went to a horse ranch the year before, but this year we can't go anywhere. But we have Zoom calls all the time. And they all uh, wrote, many, many of them wrote in the book. Of course, the book's in going into its fifth edition, so there are different writers. But the second book is Care Managers Working with the Aging Family, which I say always is a really important book. Because I say always, aging is not about the older person, it's really about the whole family. Because you have to enter the family to be able to change it. So it's about family dynamics. Marriage and family therapists know all about this, but many care managers don't. It's about family systems, and you have to understand them to do great care management, especially for those dysfunctional families, because they hire you, and then they want to fire you. And the ones that fire the most are the siblings. I read another book about that. And I also um, did the first and only uh, geriatric care management operations manual. So this is Keith. And Keith is my uh, my 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 compadre. He and I taught at uh, the University of Florida, and he's still there. And we taught in the uh, geriatric care management program, and he's still there. And um, they have a master's, and they also have a certificate program that Keith is in. He's also an active member of the Florida Aging Life Association, which is a stalwart group because there's such a high rate of COVID in Florida and such a terrible governor <laughs> who, uh, you know, is not paying attention to the older people who are dying in droves down there, hiding the statistics, making young children go back to school so that if their grandparents live with them, they spread it to the grandparents and the parents. Uh, so the Florida Aging Life Association is wonderful. Keith belongs to that. The National Council of Certified Dementia Practitioners and the National Academy of Certified Care Managers. So here we're going to start. And we're doing marketing. Well, why? And why is, let's take Kevin Costner, if you ever saw this film, Field of Dreams. And there's the farm. And Kevin Costner, pretending to be a farmer, uh, wanted to build a baseball field. You can kind of see the, you know, the, it looks like a baseball field. And the, the line from the movie was, if, if you build it, they will come. Well, it was true for the character of Kevin Costner in 1989, but it's not true for you. So if you build this COVID-19 coaching service, they will only come if you market it. And that's what we're here today to talk about. So 
we're going to talk about how you get them to come to your to your to your service and how do you get them to come you get them to come in various ways that are all under the umbrella of marketing and the first part of under the umbrella is your website the second part is you get them to come through any newsletter the third part is you get them to come through the use of social media and oops, stop. Uh, the next part is uh, you teach all the local aging agencies and local family caregivers about your COVID coaching service and you get them to come and you get them to come through your local media coverage. So you have to go out and really, um, you know, promote yourself with radio, TV and newspapers. And I'm going to talk also about what, you know, where ads pay off and they don't pay off much. Um, actually with care management we can talk a little bit about that and finally what we're going to cover is how to get uh, the word out about your service um, to uh, just through uh, word of mouth and you know that's how you know that's somebody saying well you know uh, ace care management just did a fabulous job with my mother and you should use them that's word of mouth so let's get into it. Um, first, we're going to talk about your website. Um, and so what you, oop, I don't want it there. I want it back here. Um, the first thing that I think that you absolutely need in your website is that you, um, you have to put all your COVID precautions on your website. In other words, why are you safe? You want to you want to show your clients uh, that, you know, your potential clients that you, you know, they're not going to get COVID by one of your care managers coming to their house or one of their care providers. So this is an example of an agency I'm working with in Santa Cruz, California. Uh, we are the people with the burnt orange skies. We're on the coast of California. Uh, <laughs> The smoke from all the fires are here, but this great agency um, exists in uh, Santa Cruz called Lifespan, and I actually started it in 1983 uh, with uh, four, three other women, and uh, when they needed to be bought out, because they were tired of doing it, I found a buyer for them, so I, I do a little work for them now, and I didn't do this website, but I want to show you what they did. So um, this is how they show that they are safe, and I'd like you to show how you're safe. So let's see if this comes up. Yes, it's so exciting. So um, this is what they say about how they are safe, and I love this. So you can go on your uh, own to their website, but first of all, they show how their office staff is safe. Second of all, they show that they uh, belong to a group that is partners with the local health department because the local health department runs everything, you know, within the county about the safety of the county. We right now are a purple county. That's bad, bad, bad. Um, and so, you know, we have more stars. And if you see my hair and it looks really long, it's because all the hairdressers are closed. And also, they just had to evacuate because a quarter of the, the county burnt down. Uh, so the partnership with the local health department is really important to show that you really are following the law and that you're safe and what they do with PPE they have nurses that screen uh, their care providers that's another safety thing and then they do financial support because they've invested a lot in paying their care providers really well um, you know, because of COVID and they, then they have a lot of videos and I'm going to show you one, uh, that to show how they are being safe. I'll show you that. And then, you know, these are all the precautionary me uh, measures. So let's look at a little bit of one video that they have to show the public they are safe. Here you go. Hi Lifespan, it's Vanessa McGee, Staffing Manager at Lifespan. We wanted to take this opportunity to record a video message for you all since um, we're now practicing our social distancing and haven't been able to connect with you in the office as much as we would like to. So wanted to just give you a couple updates. 
We're currently operating with a critical office crew of three people. So that includes myself, Vanessa Hall, and Alicia Cortez. Okay, so uh, no, we want Donald Trump. We're still away. open eight yeah, to four, okay. Monday through Friday. Okay, but Vanessa, that's enough. So um, this, you know, she's the staffing one of the staffing coordinators. Here's the nurse. She's showing, you know, what all the nurses do and how they stay safe. This is the office manager, and she talks about what she does in the front office to that when you come in, you're not going to spread COVID. Uh, this is Stephen, and he's head of the well-being program, which is a quality of life program at about how the well-being um, uh, care man caregivers uh, are staying safe. And then they have, you know, local grocery and essential shopping. I'm going to talk about that a little bit, but you can see what it means because older people have to have food and they're sheltering in place. So how do they, um, you know, get that food? How does a representative, their family member, whoever? And this is a list of all the, you know, the stores and the hours. So this is, uh, this is great. And you too can do that. And, you know, if you're not going to be that fancy, at least put all your COVID measures up there. That's really important. The second thing you can do on your website is to put COVID in your menu of services. Sorry, taking a drink. And this isn't really, um, I don't have an agency anymore. I sold it 15 years ago, but uh, this is a table of contents for um, my operations manual, but it's pretend your, your table of contents, uh, your menu of services. So what you wanna do is down here, add your COVID services but have it prominent in your, um, in your menu of services. And that's really an important thing because it's an advertisement. This is marketing and you wanna add it there. The next thing you wanna do uh, for a newsletter, first of all, to get started with a newsletter, what you have to do is have a platform. And uh, that, you know, the platform sends out your newsletter. And uh, here's three ways to do it. And uh, you create your marketing campaign on that platform. And I use Constant Contact. I love it because they have fabulous customer service. And they will actually, you know, uh, do a lot of layout for you. And, <clears throat> you know, if you, um, if you don't know how specifically do the editing or get rid of something, they'll fix it for you and show you how to do it. And uh, I'm 75, so, you know, I'm pretty good, uh, but I'm not as good as my nine-year-old grandson twins or, um, you know, any younger people. So Constant Contact has that. SurveyMonkey is really good and other choices. I'm going to let you click on those links when you get this. You will get the PowerPoint. Uh, today or tomorrow, then you can look at it yourself and click all the links. So here's some ideas for stories to put in your newsletter. You know, first of all, you want to have an announcement of your COVID-19 program with great graphics and, um, you know, great copy. And what is copy? Copy writing. If you ever watched Mad Men, Peggy was a copywriter. If you remember Peggy. And she, um, she got so mad at Dawn, she started her own company because she was such a good copywriter. My dad was a copywriter, and actually, I'm real good at it. Uh, but it, it's somebody that writes the text in a really good way that makes you buy what you want. So you want to announce your COVID program with great copy and create great um, graphics. Um, you want to, you know, also the home delivery uh, for local groceries or online delivery or stores that are open and what their hours are. That's another story. Um, what you, you, another story is giving the links to all the religious services that are coming up during the holidays, uh, which would be, you know, the, the religious services in, in you know, churches, synagogues, uh, Buddhist temples. You know, you know, because people, you know, maybe because of COVID want to know, you know, how they can access them on the radio on a daily basis. But usually, you know, people do go on the holidays and that's a good thing to put in there. Um, and then quality of life activities. 
quality of life if you have the handbook of geriatric care management. There's a whole chapter in, on that on Nina by Nina Herndon, who started this whole movement. Uh, she's the godmother of it all. And Lifespan has a program, and probably you should have a program too, and uh, they call it well-being. And uh, what the program does, it offers virtually and in person uh, ways for older people to enrich their life when they're more isolated. And who's more isolated right now than people that are sheltering in place with COVID? It causes a lot of depression, even in younger people. I, I can get depressed about not going out, and I actually, I'm old. Um, <clears throat> so... Um, what you want to do, and you have it in, if you got my COVID uh, program or you created your own, you should have a social engagement uh, section that shows how older people can reach out uh, either virtually or, you know, in person, how they can, you know, uh, do things that, you know, keep them from getting you know, depressed. And you can have a whole, you know, a whole copyrighted section in your newsletter, you know, fast flash of that. Or another story idea is to give a list of great reasons that the customer should come work with you. And that you probably should make ongoing in your in your newsletter. And then you can get a lot of help from Alka. Alka has just gone way out this way to help uh, members, care management members, uh, learn how to uh, deal with COVID with themselves, with their own business and, and their clients. And so they have this great uh, document called Why Work with Al Alka during, uh, Alka member during a crisis. If you belong to Alka, just get that. And they have all sorts of resources with COVID. And, uh, you know, you can do that too. Um, more ideas is not only, you know, what you want to do is join ALCA because ALCA is really a great organization and they have just gobs of stuff about coronavirus. So this is a link to join ALCA if you want to do that. And I, you should do it as far as I'm concerned. Now you want to add videos and I just showed you what Lifespan does and they're fabulous videos. And you want to add them to your newsletter because people are really attracted to videos. And you know, it's, it's an easy sell. Um, and also, and this sounds like, oh my God, Kathy, start a life, start a, um, uh, YouTube channel. Now I am 75. I've had a YouTube channel for 10 years. So if I can do it, you can do it. You just need, uh, an iPhone <laughs> and somebody to edit it. It's not rocket science. And uh, you can click on this Lifespan Care Management channel, and they have all those great videos on the YouTube channel. You could do it too. And it's a great idea for marketing. And um, so also, um, you know, the studio, the, you know, the videos for Lifespan, I just showed them to you, you know, on your YouTube channel, put all the videos with your staff introducing uh, all the all the ways you stay stay safe and you know what products you have um, and you can deliver your products you know actually through your YouTube, YouTube channel and when you have any newsletter uh, video is great because it's the prime way to tell a story um, we are hardwired to react to stories because we've been listening to them since we were very little children and the thing is that, you know, we're hardwired because that's how we used to communicate everything. Our history was that way. If you read the Iliad or the Aeneid, they were stories about the history of this battle, et cetera, et cetera, because there were no books. <laughs> and so stories are still there. And how do they still exist in videos? And if you noticed and you listened to Vanessa that was talking about the staffing, she was telling a story. She was saying, we used to have 20 people working in this office and then because of COVID, we went to three and this is what we do in the office with only three people. And also the rest of the office is not gone. They're at home, they're using telehealth. So we're all still here using telehealth. That's a story. 
and stories really work. And all you simply do is use your iPhone, and if you click on this link, tell a story, you'll learn all about telling stories, and click on this link. You can learn how to record um, a story or anything on your YouTube. And if I can do it again, I'd like to say you could. <clears throat> Okay, the next thing is social media, um, and uh, I'm giving you, you know, lots of links. You can click on yourself. You want to join LinkedIn if you haven't done it before. It's really a professional website, and you can tell, you know, everything about your agency, but everything about how you are stay, sit, staying safe in COVID and what products you have available. You can put that all in LinkedIn because, you know, you can blog in LinkedIn. You can put it in, you know, lots of different ways in LinkedIn because they have all sorts of groups that you can introduce this, plus uh, you can get to customers that way. And the Aging Life Association, for instance, is there. Um, you want to absolutely create a Facebook fan page uh, for your GCM business. And, you know, again, that is fairly easy. And if you can't do it, you know, you can get your teenage, uh, probably grandchildren or children to help you. If not, I really highly advise uh, using Upwork and, and Fiverr, uh, because you can find people who, you know, do everything, you know, do video editing, etc., all over the world in the gig, gig economy that are really inexpensive. For instance, my YouTube channel now is really managed by a guy in Australia that just, I do the videos, but he edits them, he puts music in, you know, he makes them start and stop at the right time. And uh, he's very inexpensive and he's great. So, um, you know, I'd suggest that and then learn to use Pinterest for your business and create a, a Twitter account and a Twitter handle. I have a Twitter handle now. It's Kathy Jo Kress because that's what my mom named me. And uh, my dad couldn't name me because he was in prison camp in World War II at the time. However, um, you know, it's an easy way for people to know that that, you know, I'm so cool, I'm using Twitter. But Twitter really works because it's, you know, short. <clears throat> this is a, a absolute, you know, a create a Google business page, my business page. And why do you do that? Because Google, everybody uses Google. I just told you to use um, If people are doing a Google, and, you know, what it does by setting yourself up on a Google page, it confirms to um, Google that you're not a re Russian bot. They're very bad if you worry about the uh, election, and um, and that you're not, you know, you're not fraudulent. And so, once they figure out you're not that terrible Russian bot, they give you a high trust ranking uh, within their algorithm, and that's really good for you too. So, um, you know, it pays in a lot of different ways, and um, and you know, they'll help you with SEO, which are you know good words. Uh, in your Google page. So, you know, absolutely do that, you know, without a, without a doubt. Um, so let's, you know, Google also has new features for healthcare providers because of COVID. So you can put a link in for all your online care options. So you can put a link in for all your COVID uh, coaching services, you know, and how you do them, your phone consults, your Zoom cults, et cetera. So you can put that on and you can add a virtual care link um, so that you could, they, you know, you, that you can actually get to your customers via Google, via your own link. That's very cool. So you can do that as well. And uh, then you can add COVID and, uh, update information because COVID is, it's constantly uh, evolving, you know, it's, you know, we are evolving and how, how we treat it when we're, you know, like I said, people get out of the hospital alive now because we've learned more about it. Um, but COVID itself, ch it changes all the time. It gets stronger and, um, uh, and then it bet you know then it pat it goes away after sixty percent of the population and but that hasn't happened yet so uh, you want to put your COVID update here and you would get that by belonging to your Department of Health 
because you know if they're not in florida i don't know about the florida departments of health i know they're not great in giving you the truth but um uh, you know if you have a and usually the department of health is a really good piece of information they haven't been co-opted by the federal government so um you can get the the updated skinny or you can actually use the johns hopkins uh site you know they're a great source of information so you want to go to the reputable site the cdc is really hard right now because the, the trump in uh the trump administration has co-opted it um but you know you you want to tell people the truth about you know how things are changing so social media blogs are another way that you can do this and um you know you want to and this is a really good way so you say to me kathy oh my god you know you're telling me to you know how to be a great ger geriatric care manager and then you want me to go out and market on top of it and now you want me to write blogs you're crazy well i'm not altogether crazy because if you have prepared these five products and put them all together then you can go to that link to watch my first video um, you can take your procedures and what I call cannibalize yourself because I do it all the time because uh, I've been doing blogs for so long I can repurpose them and use them over and over again but for instance you should have a procedure for advanced directives why with COVID because in the first ideation of COVID in New York you know people who and 50% of all older people haven't written an advanced directive so start there and if people haven't written it they have to go to a lawyer and write it and it takes a while to do it so you should have a, a procedure about advanced directives because there's a short way to do it and you should put that in in your in your um, in your procedure in that all states you can go to them immediately and get the forms and you know sign them so there's instant advanced directives and you want that but you can put all this information all your research into a blog that you've already if you've created the procedure then you can just steal from yourself and like social connection i was talking about that earlier all the social connection uh virtually that's available in your community for instance in our community um, all the senior centers are now virtual uh, they all their activities are online and so um, you want to put all that out in in blogs and you can just again steal from yourself uh, preventing isolation and loneliness i could go on and on but take pieces of all the procedures you have and use them for blogs and you want to get a website that that post right the post that has all the blogs on it to post instantly there and uh, wordpress is the one that i use and i really like it so the next thing is to do a zoom webinar and you're going oh my god kathy i'm gonna like i'm ending this don't end uh a zoom webinar is a great idea just uh basically about covid and webinars, what they do is it promotes your GCM agency as experts in the area and you want to be an expert in COVID because people will choose you instead of other agencies if you've proven to them that you really, really are a safe, great choice to help them. It showcases your GCM, GCM's agency knowledge of COVID-19. You want that to be out in the community because it's not going to go away right away, even if you get a vaccine. It takes a while to roll this out. Um, it establishes your GCM agency as an authority in the field, and you want to be the authority in your, in your area because it will make clients choose you and you want to establish your GCM agency as experts, as professionals. And, you know, you can see by the videos I just showed you with Lifespan, they are experts, and you want to showcase that in videos. And uh, because you're going to get potential new clients out of the, uh, the coaching services, if you do a really good job and they see that you can really help their older uh, adult 
you know, family member, then, you know, they, they, there's a good chance they'll hire you. So this is a future stream of clients and it gives you free publicity of, you know, besides, uh, advertising for a webinar, the only thing that I would say uh, you should do is hire, uh, Lifespan hired a group called Hive that um, that organizes their whole webinar so that, you know, every t everyone talks at the right time, the webinar starts at the right time. I mean, it's all the tech stuff that, that Keith does for me. And uh, that, but you have multiple speakers in, an, in a webinar. So, you know, webinar is a great idea. And um, what you want to do with a, a webinar or, you know, anything uh, is to use HIPAA compliant platform. Now, Zoom is a HIPAA compliant platform, but there's nine other uh, platforms that you could use. And one of the people in my one of the students in my class, Helen Justice, uh, who's a great care manager in Roseville, uh, California uh, had done all this research and there were nine other choices that were a lot less expensive but why do you want a HIPAA compliant one in the first place uh, because you're both giving and receiving healthcare information and it's protected under HIPAA and why is it you don't want your healthcare information compromised and all over the place so the federal government started this thing called HIPAA that it really means health insurance portability and accounted Accountability Act, uh, but it's basically to self, set, set, self safeguard your medical information. And if you are using telehealth to consult with somebody, you are actually exchanging and talking about their healthcare information. So you want to use as you know, you want to use a, a telehealth compliant platform because your platform, your telehealth platform is a way that you're also going to do your, um, your webinars and it's a way you're going to individually consult with people one-to-one -one and, um, you know, it's a way to get out into the house of your client and not have to actually go there. It's virtual. So get a Zoom, uh, well, Zoom is only one choice. So. Um, your e-newsletter back to that how do you reach adult children or what you know what, what's your vehicle and i'm going to give you some tips about what to add to your media database uh, constant contact and survey monkey etc all have a marketing database attached to them it's just like a crm and i'm not going to go into that but that's your marketing database um, and what it does is it gives all sorts of third parties and then under and under the third parties all the individuals so you'd have elder law attorneys as third parties and then all the elder law attorneys in your community so you want adult children in there and it's really hard to get them and the way to do it is by putting all these clubs in here because women still belong to clubs men still belong to clubs private clubs but they're usually uh, people of a certain age. They're usually adult children. So these are great resources. So in your marketing database for your e-newsletter, you want to put in women's clubs in your area. And usually AUW is there. It's the American Association of Retired University Women. And they, you know, it's a great group, but you can um, send your newsletter to them. The Junior League... Uh, Sir Optimus or examples, but look for all the women's club in your area, all the cultural clubs. And if you have the symphony or choral or opera in your area, um, who, you know, the members are usually, you know, adult children. And so what you do is you always find out who is the contact? Somebody is the contact for bringing in speakers. And you can do a webinar and be a speaker to them virtually. Uh, but right now, you're just trying to get your newsletter out to them. So you want to include all the cultural clubs in your area, all the political clubs. League of Women Voters is great. It's great now during the election. It's been forever. And uh, you get the contact there. And Indivisible, that's younger and older people. I'm older and I, I belong to Indivisible and I have tons of older friends here in Santa Cruz that belong to Indivisible. It's a real mix of ages. So you want to get the contacts in Indivisible. Service clubs are fabulous. This is women and men now. It used to be only men. 
Uh, but the rotary is, rotary is great. Um, and the lions and the kiwanas, you want to get the contacts for each, each chapter, each group, um, and uh, send it to all the chapters of the rotary, rotary in your area. Uh, because, you know, you can speak virtually to them. And uh, you can also send your newsletter to them. And then all your senior services organization need to be another category. And um, also places of worship, I, you know, because who are the parishioners or the churchgoers or the people that belong to religious organizations now? They're the older people. And so you can get clients out of that as well. But you want to put the minister or the person in the church or, you know, temple or whatever that, um, that you know, takes media. And then your local health department. So these are all great to add to that database to send your newsletter out. So how do you prepare uh, a webinar's content? I'm going to go over that. So first of all, you choose a topic about COVID in this case. You can choose any topic, but we're talking about COVID now, about your COVID program. And so, you know, you could say seniors, the topic was seniors sheltering in place uh, safely because you're advertising, you know, that, that segment of your COVID uh, procedures. But you can, you know, choose any topic you want. And then, you know, get to know, be already know it. If you've done, if you've done the work that I asked you to and prepared, you know, uh, COVID procedures, then you've already got that. So you want to use them to outline the speech. So you want to outline the speech. You should only have four to six parts. I'll go over that in a little bit. You want to end with a link with a free checklist of what they need to do. Don't put completely everything. That's the secret. Uh, but you, you know, basically you want them to sign up for your webinar. And excuse me, you, they, you want them to sign up for the newsletter because you, that you can keep you know, posting the newsletter to them and, be, and making them familiar with you as an agency for the COVID procedures, but to be a full-time client. And then you want to put a link to sign up for your newsletter. You can see that on, um, on Lifespan and sign up for your website to get the newsletter and anything else you send out. So you got to create a PowerPoint for a webinar, and this is how to do that. So you always start with something interactive, and I do a lot of them, and I do a lot of speaking. So you want to engage your audience. You want to get their attention and not have them nod off or get up and leave. And so start with a quiz. You know, what is, uh, who's the most vulnerable group in COVID? Well, that's a job, but, you know, let them answer it because, you know, it gets them thinking about, uh, you know, it, it, interacting with you, not, not taking, you know, naps, which a lot of people do. Um, and you want catchy questions. Uh, you know, what, what, what number have we gotten in the, in the amount of people who have COVID in the United States? You know, where are we among the world for the most COVID? Well, I think everybody knows that. Uh, but you, um, you know, you want, you want catchy questions in the very beginning. You only want to cover four to six points, as I said that. You want to frame every point as a question, because that's, again, what people gets people engaged. So, you know, this is an example. What, what is the advantage of doing advanced directives early? And, you know, they're just going to think about it, but they're engaged with you and somebody's going to answer. So they pay attention to their own answers. And that's, that's how you teach well. <laughs> I was a teacher. I learned how to teach. Um, you want to use open-ended questions that you can, you know, start a lot of discussion with. Uh, and you want to end with solutions, always. The ending of, you know, the, the webinar are some solutions. And, uh, and a solution is to subscribe to your telehealth products <clears throat> and give the link. Um, now, back to the media database, how do you create that? Um, 
you look into local papers. So you figure out all the local papers in your area and you should be doing this yourself, not getting a list because you should, you should really know yourself. And then once you know the, all the local papers, you want to find out who are the reporters that cover health, COVID, um, you know, or seniors. And, you know, you can find those names usually, you know, by going onto the website because they're who you're going to pitch your story to. And then you want to find all the contacts, you know, all the radio stations in and TV stations in your area. Who's the contact? Because ultimately you're going to pitch your story to them. I'm going to show you how to do that. So you want to uh, tag all the media. And tag means what you put at the top. You know, this is this group. This is media. Media group tag media group um, in an email database that you're going to put in your email database. Um, and then um, more to create an, uh, a media database. This is really important because, you know, you can write all you want, but if you have nobody to send it to, you're in New Jersey, I would say you're screwed. In California, probably to say that too, but it's not good. Um, so for um, local, you want to, you know, as I said before, don't buy a list, make the list from scratch. So you really know it and you can call and get the real skinny and keep the lists up to date. You want to call over and over again because people leave media, media they get let go because, you know, newspapers don't have stories anymore and they don't have the advertising. That's really, you know, what keeps them going. And so they really like to cover uh, local, local stories and you have a local story to give them. Um, and um, so getting the contact for radio and TV and newspapers, you want to find out the assignment editors. They're the people that assign um, stories and the reporters who cover senior issues in COVID and health. And I told you that. And same thing with the radio house, radio hosts. You also want to find the, you know, the main Facebook uh, you know, posters, I mean, you know, in your area, they're all, you, you know, you can find that out as well. Or, you know, there are Facebook groups with media, there are instant Instagram groups with media, you can find them on Facebook or Instagram. And they're the influencer, influencers in your area. And you want to get your story to them too, because Online is just as important basically now as, you know, the written word on paper. Um, and you want to find the local bloggers that are really important. Uh, and, you know, Patch and Nextdoor are really important. Patch and Nextdoor are all over the country. And what they are is little neighborhoods that, you know, it's sort of like, um, you know, they trade information. Uh, you know, who usually it's used furniture or lost dogs, but it's in many cases really important. For instance, during our, you know, fires that literally built, burnt up a quarter of my county, Santa Cruz County, um, news, news next door came out in my little next door, which is the east side neighborhood, and said, <clears throat> The power is going to go down today because, you know, the fires are so bad throughout California that they're going to have to do, you know, they're going to have to turn off the power at three o'clock. So this is what you do. You know, you charge your, you charge your computer before three o'clock. You do your wash, you wash your dishes, etc. So they were giving me really, you know, competent, wonderful, important information. And they will, you know, if you put your information in there, they will come just like the, you know, the baseball, the baseball field uh, and patches another one like next door. So dig deeper in media than just the newspapers and the, and the television. Okay. Now we've come to what to pitch. Like I told you where, you know, what, how to do it, but then what are you going to pitch? What is pitching anyway? Pitching is pitching the story to one of the, editors or the person who covers seniors etc and uh what are you going to pitch you're going to pitch your product and you're going to pitch it i'm going to tell you you know the parts of your product but your product is your COVID uh, 19 coaching products so you use the old thing in journalism i was the 
editor of my college newspaper. So, uh, you know, I studied journalism and I actually taught it. And these are the real basics. <clears throat> you know, it's journalism 101 or minus 90 or something. There's who, what, why, where, and how. So I'm going to go through your pitch this way. So who, the who is your local agency. That's you. The who is you. You have a product to pitch. The what is... Um, you the, the you are offering through this COVID-19 uh, series of products, science-based navigation to safety in your town, put your town in it, through COVID coaching services to keep elders safe. Now, why are you going to do that is the why? Because there's massive mixed messaging from the federal, state, county, cities, governments that are very confusing to older, um, to adult children to keep their, um, you know, older family members safe. And that's really true. The federal government did not take charge of having a singular message like it did in the 30s with the Depression. Actually, Herbert Hoover, the, you know, preceding uh, go president in, uh, during the Depression, said it wasn't even happening. That's why it got voted out. That might give you a clue. <laughs> and, uh, and, and Roosevelt came in and he centralized everything in the federal government so that there, weren't, there wasn't mixed messaging. And he needed to do that. But that's not happening to us. The states are on their own. That makes, the, and you know, even the counties are on their own. They all have different, like look at Texas. Some, you know, some counties you know, say you have to wear a mask. Some counties say they don't, even though the governor says don't wear them, other counties absolutely stick to it. So there's this mess of messaging and you are going to override that because you have a science-based series of messages based on, um, on reliable information from the CDC, from the Johns Hopkins, uh, you know, cite from, you know, really reliable sources. And uh, you're and you're an expert at navigation. That's what geriatric care managers are. And you know older people so that you can keep, help families keep the older person safe. And that's a great what. And the why is really important too, because you need science-based public health navigation. The where is your town. The how is through your COVID coaching for sheltering in place, blah, 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 blah products. And would you like to cover the story? So that's a pitch. And you can just, you know, use that for me. And how do you give a pitch? You make the subject of the email do the talking. So you're going to email in your pitch. You're going to make it short and right to the point, And that's short that I just gave you. Don't do a mark. Don't do an elevator speech. That's a marketing pitch. They don't want to hear that. Um, you know, they're really busy. There's been tons of layoffs in the newspapers and radio, et cetera, in the media. Um, so, you know, basically, uh, you know, give a short pitch and I've given you that and know when to call, like for instance, in TV newsrooms. And you can get television coverage because they're desperate too. If you have something for COVID, it's news. And you don't call the TV newsrooms after three. Why? Because all the news is going on for the evening. Uh, you want to call the front desk and ask for the newsroom. Once there, ask nicely who would be your contact, and you should have done this research before, and get the name and the phone number and the extension and the best time to contact all the senior editors, et cetera, et cetera, that you're going to talk to. Um, you want to give the pitch on local TV news because that's great coverage. They give, go day to day. Things change for them day to day because there's a crisis to jour usually and they cover the crises. So um, for events like your webinar, do a release closer to the date and then follow up the day of in the morning of to remind them uh, to put something, you know, that you'd like that coverage because they can come in and, you know, watch you doing it and or they could go and film somebody that was watching and talk about their COVID problem if the family allowed. Um, and assignment editors make assignments in the morning. So 
uh, you want to, you know, contact them in the morning, really probably ahead of time. Um, and you can go on the media website and they always have a contact page with the latest roster of employees. So that's a good way to learn, you know, the editors and the reporters and their phone numbers and find the radio stations and TV stations in your area. And if you want to, this is a link that you can get um, actually to, you know, help you in that, you know, in finding them. Um, so word of mouth is the last part, and um, we all know how word of mouth works. Um, you know, you, you find a great product um, that you really, really like, and uh, you say this is the greatest thing in the world to your girlfriend, and she tries it, or to your male friend. Women are much more product-oriented. Um, and uh or you know basically the product is COVID 19. so you hope that if you you know have a great five-star product that you know that adult child who belongs to the auw is going to tell the other members in the auw or that gentleman who belongs to the to the to the rotary who you know, you've contacted and talked to and maybe used your service is going to tell everybody in the Rotary this was a great idea, great product. So to do that, you have to have a five-star customer service. You have to be the best. I can't, you know, tell you how to do that here, but it's really important to be five stars because it is the five-star product that people talk about. And you want to have uh, make it easy for the customers to contact you. Don't bury your, you know, the link to get to you in your website. Put it right out there. Contact, and you want to maintain an, a positive image. And you know, this is a given in aging. You don't want to show unhappy people in your brochure. You want to show really happy people. Why? Because it's really advertising after you have worked with them that you did make them happy and people buy from just that picture. So you yourself have to mirror that by having a positive image in your in the in the videos, in the pictures that you have on your website, in in everything, a positive image in the way you talk as well. And then you want to ask for testimonials. You should ask every client after they um, they they are discharged if they would give you a, a a testimonial. Sometimes they won't. Sometimes they will. But put it on your website and display it prominently. And then the last thing is you know, duh, put abundant care, a lot of care in care management. So uh, right now, all I'm going to do is really go quickly through the offers that I usually make at the end of a webinar, and it's for attendees and anybody that signed up for this. So um, the number one offer is my geriatric care management manual that's been out 10 years. It's now in its fifth edition, and the fifth edition contains all the five COVID products that I have if you don't want to do them yourself. And these are all the products, again, that are in there. But in addition to that, um, you know, these, this is the benefits. It's also 14 other products that, um, that are really good products to use uh, for uh, geriatric care management, families that need geriatric care management. Um, just like I showed you in the very beginning of the second slide, like home from the hospital, uh, <clears throat> death and dying, you wouldn't think it's a great product. It's a fabulous product. Care Management Plus, which is, you know, somebody that needs more than 12 hours of care. Personal Plus, uh, that's a, you know, a uh, non-medical service. So at any rate, it has all that in it. But what are the benefits of uh, the operations manual? So you can start a, um, you don't have to, you know, in the case of COVID, you don't have to start, you don't have to write all these procedures. They're already done. They're in the manual. Um, if you want to start an aging life or geriatric care management business with pre-made care manager products and training, 
uh, you don't have to do it yourself. That's the so what. Uh, it's all done for you because the products not only are there, but the step-by-step -step delivery of the products are there. So it's a training manual as well. Um, it allows you to effortlessly onboard and train new employees because it's training manual. It has step-by-step -step for every job in your agency, how to deliver the product, every care manager, how to deliver the product. And it has gold standard, standard, standard easy training for all the employees. And you want to have, you know, just what I told you before, five-star uh, services. And the manual makes it easy to open a second agency. Why? Because you have a, a turnkey operation and the manual. You have a blueprint for exactly how to set up, set up your seventh, eight, second agency. And it offers risk management. And what's the so what about that? You won't get sued so much. You might still get sued because, you know, dysfunctional families tend to, you know, bring you in when they're suing their other family members. Uh, and if you have gold standard, you're not going to get sued very much at Earth at all. But if you have a manual, I have given you gold standard um, procedures. And um, the features are, as I said, it has 14 services, a separate forms manual of 54 integrated forms. It's electronic, so you get it and you can edit both manuals and make it your own, put your logo on, etc. And for the webinar, it's $7.99 instead of $8.99. You first have to sign a contract for my intellectual property so you want to start a franchise on your own. And if you're interested, you just get in touch with me there. Um, the, second, uh, pro the second offer I have is uh, to have an operations manual class, an excellent one, a lot of people in it right now. And there are people that want to learn how to deliver the manual. Um, so it's taught by me, obviously. It's a self-paced class, so you can do it on your own time. You have a year to finish it. And it comes with 20 hours of complimentary consultation with me. And it includes 20 PowerPoints because there's 14 products. But Death and Dying have five parts to it. And Home from the Hospital has three. Pre-hospital, in the hospital, out of the hospital. So it makes together 20 PowerPoints that you go through. And it also has marketing with each individual module. Then there's a whole marketing PowerPoint at the end. So I'm teaching you how to market uh, your services as well as deliver them and, you know, the whole nine yards. And uh, you receive an operations and a forms manual. I already talked about that. And so what? It's a great deal. Um, you, you know, can create marketing materials and benefits to third parties. That way you make a lot more money and it makes your agency more scalable so you can open a second agency and sell it for twice the price. So what? You can easily expand. You save money and time uh, as your care manager's staff have the manual for a reference. So you, you, know, you can use it for training. I used it for training for years with my agency so that you can take vacations. And, you know, it's not all in your head, and that's really important. And if you're ill or sick and you have to take time off, you can stay in bed instead of having everybody call you is the so what. And then you can sell your agency for double the price. And you may not think about that but that becomes really important at the end because care management agencies are hard to sell and um, so if you have a turnkey operation that a manual gives you can sell it for twice the price so you can retire and travel the world whenever you can again with COVID because now we can it's nearly not you're normally nine 995 it's 895 with this offer again the signed contract and if you're interested um, email me at my email and all these office officer offers and they turn back into the pumpkin on 718 the last one is the new online business class that I've had for uh, last year and this is for newbies, uh, people that just are starting or people that are uh, restarting again. I have a lot of them. 
and uh, it's you know a GCM business startup suite. It's normally six fifty. It's five fifty. Um, you get ten free modules. Uh, there's ten modules with the powerpoints, and that's with powerpoints. These are all, you know, how to do a competition survey. I'm not going to read them all, but you can see it's soup to nuts, and you know how to run a geriatric care management agency, and it comes with ten hours of coaching one to one with me. Um, and there's one hour with each module and uh, PowerPoint in you can get CUs um, too, probably from NACM because I'm just about to apply. And I have free tech support for both of them. I have a tech person who's worked with me for five years who now works in Silicon Valley. She was a tech major at uh, UC Berkeley where I went and I hire a lot of people through there. And so any tech problems you have with Blackboard with both classes, Tanu will come in and help you one-to-one -one and fix it. And she's wonderful. Um, there are recommendations about both classes on my website. Um, and so check them out, see how my students really feel about the whole deal. And um, this is the end. So these are various ways that you can connect with me and you can see if you want to watch the last video from August 6th on how to put this together yourself. <clears throat> um, this is the link to that. You know, I have a blog. I already told you about that. That's how to follow that. And my blogs right now, you know, I, I didn't, you know, cannibalize them. <laughs> I have been, you know, blogging nonstop about COVID for about three months. and. Um, you know, I'm really good at doing this. I don't say it in an egotistical way. You know, it's in my genes. That was what my father did. <laughs> and um, you can subscribe to my Facebook page here and visit my website, kathycrass.com, or visit me on Twitter. And so now we're going to take questions. Thank you, Kathy, for yet another uh, well done presentation, chock full of information. As usual, as we've come to expect now over, over and all short. this And short. It was short. Keith loves short. <laughs> it was short. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was informative. So, and, and they always are. Uh, you know, however long they take, doesn't really matter. It's, it's how much you pack into them and how much you're covering uh, right. in, in that period of time. So I don't see any questions in the Q&A part, but I let me, let me just um, back up a minute here. And, and there was a a note made earlier on uh, in your presentation here in the in the chat part of the uh, with this setup here and in the in it's uh, from Raymond and he is talking about how um, that we want to encourage people to have a, a long-term care plan his thoughts are that um, by the time that the families want to talk about these things that they want to talk about the need to do something that they're typically in a crisis situation at that point, by the time they've come to realize it. And that, that does happen quite frequently in, in my experience anyway. Right. Uh, and then he goes on to talk about uh, all families uh, in poverty. And then, and here's the question, and I think there's really two questions here. Uh, we need your services. I'm talking about how uh, care management services, but cannot pay or cannot afford to pay, I guess, those those prices, do you offer discounts? Uh, and that would be, I'm just going to chime in here, Kathy, before you even get a chance to, but that would be up to the individual uh, uh, manager, care manager, wouldn't it be? Uh, up to Absolutely. The individual? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, you can either refer, I mean, you should know all the other care management resources in your community and uh, know yeah. Yeah. where someone could go that doesn't have the resources. So you, sh you can refer them on. And it's really up to you, when you if you want to have a sliding scale. Uh, that's been a big discussion point with ALCA. Um, I can tell you that you can't make enough money to make your payroll unless you're billing 85%. And I do a webinar on that, and I'll do one this year. So if you really keep in touch with, um, you know, sign up to get my newsletter, I, I would, you know, I always, or my blogs, I announce them. Uh, but it's really important. You can have a great agency, but if you can't make your payroll, 
you're not going to stay in business and you have to bill 85%. So you have 15% to fool around with. Um, and I'm actually going to do it. I was telling Keith, I'm going to do it a presentation at the Western regional um, conference. It's virtual um, next at the, in October and no, actually at the end of September. And I'm going to do a whole presentation on what the insurance resources are for you. And um, like Medicare for all, uh, you know, like uh, ACA and what will happen with that. <clears throat> um, so, you know, that's another option. But right now, you know, the only thing you have is to, um, is to, you know, sign a contract with each insurer and that's a nightmare. So in the end, just to say that uh, every, it's up to everybody, just like he said. It's up to each individual business and stuff. Now let, let me get back to that to that insurance thing that you're you're going to be presenting here. I don't know if it was at this conference coming up or in one of these. So maybe I'll get to hear it myself anyway. But you're 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 referring to insurance in terms of payment to the care manager right that's what you're right exactly you're, yeah if, okay if, for yeah. care for rendered rendered services to the right. to their client or, or consumer customer whatever they call them okay all right okay so that's that's a, a billable uh, right. opportunity like you humana like senior bridge yeah. figured out how to use humana insurance and they bought them um, <laughs> yeah, the heck with that. We're going to buy you and we're going to do it ourselves. Right. That's what they said. Um, you know, so it's not accessible to everybody. You know, all insurances aren't. But, I'm, you know, I thought because that came up when we Alka was discuss, discussing Black Lives Matter and how, you know, care management is the tragedy is it's not available to the lower 90 percent because you can't yeah. afford it, not because of care management, because of home care, how expensive that is. So, um, you know, what were the alternatives and how could you bill under the 90%? And insurance is one of the, one of the possibilities and it made me really want to do some research into it. So that hasn't happened yet. And um, I will put that on my, it's on my website right now. If you go to my website, kathycrest.com, and go under speaking, um, you can find the, uh, I'm the main speaker of the, uh, of the, uh, the website of the, of the, the conference. And I'm going to be talking about what I'm talking about to you because they were really interested in it too. So you can hear me say this again. And then uh, I do this whole uh, breakout on, uh, you know, basically, how could you build that 90%? And, uh, you know, I talk about insurance. So, and I'm sure they'll sell, they'll sell copies. So it's available. Come All right. On. Um, Every time we're here, I rant. Keith doesn't. He's very nice. But I <laughs> rant at you. I told you in the beginning, write your questions down. You have to have questions. Oh, well, wait a minute. We got some stuff coming in now. So oh, let, let me get back to, I'm going to, I want to finish up with Raymond. He, 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 he goes on to talk about the conversation project, which is a, which is a very good, uh, definitely worth, worth uh, investigating. If you don't know about the conversation project, he has the YouTube it's on it's on youtube it's they have their own website it's a whole national if not worldwide uh movement uh if that's the correct term yeah um to have people more aware of what their decisions are later in life you know and that's really it's it's the start of that conversation it's i don't know if it's really really important and you can yeah. see that in covid because i briefly Especially now, yeah. that when the beginning of the uh, of the COVID in, in New York, the surge was so huge. They had people in the hallways. I mean, you can remember those, bit, you know, the, the newscasts. And the discharge planners were so overwhelmed that they didn't ask about the advanced directives in many cases because it was, they were lucky to get the people in. And so people died without their last wishes. That was the incredibly sad part of this. And so that's why, you know, it's an example of why this is so important. And, you know, people can get, they can shelter in place and get COVID in a dime. And then do you have the advanced directive done? 
and there's a way you can do it. I mentioned that if you do the research or, you know, if you, you know, want to get the manual, I have it already in there, but, you know, every state has its own um, fast directive to take that into account. And All right, let me, let me just, uh, and I think this is a question really for another time and another place because it, uh, you know, we need to move on to really okay. what's pertaining to this, but he asked, what do you do if you cannot be a caregiver because of coronavirus? And that depends on whether or not the caregiver, him or herself, has coronavirus, the patient you're caring, the person you're caring for has coronavirus. So that's a long, long answer to a, to a question that's really not, I don't think, appropriate for, for no. this particular uh, um, because there's, you, you'd have to contact your doctor and all that, you know, and, and there's, a, there's a lot involved with, <laughs> with caregiving and, and having the disease. And, uh, exactly. and there's plenty of resources out there on the Internet that can answer that question a lot better, I think, than I can. Right. Uh, you, you can know. hire your agency. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. let's get that. Okay. okay. And, and I just want to make a, a point here. Uh, D um, makes a note that, that you have a great operations manual with forms. Uh, and uh, that D has been in business for eight years and has a lot of structure to her business. And she feels like um, she finds great value in the manual as well as her books. And I would, I would agree with that. I have, as Kathy mentioned, I teach uh, uh, care management courses up at the University of Florida. And I use uh, one, two of her textbooks, actually, in, in, the, in the three courses that I teach. Uh, so they are. Thank you, Dee. I know Dee. Yeah, yeah, I do too. Yes, thank you, yeah. Dee. Yeah. Um, let's see here. So, okay, so let me get over here to the questions and it's, there's a couple of them here. Yeah, they're coming in now. Uh, let's see, Stephanie uh, mentions that this is great content. Thanks. I am a private patient advocate, not a geriatric care manager and just a single person LLC, not looking to expand with employees. Would you, would your manual or online course still be applicable to my business? Oh, absolutely. Because most care managers are, um, they're, they're boutique. They just, you know, all they do is care management. They don't have any care, you know, caregivers at all. And that's 80% of ALCA really. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, of them, yeah. um, you know, <clears throat> it, you know, and the beautiful thing about the telehealth project, it's just that it's just consulting. You know, you're really literally a coach or consultant. There's no caregivers involved. Um, you know, you can, if you have an agency, you can, you know, suggest, like the guy said, you know, the caregiver's sick. Uh, well, you know, you could supply them with a caregiver. But it's really just coaching. And um, so, yeah, you can use it for sure if you want to put the coaching program into um into action so let me if i if i can just if i can just expand on just for a second here you, you went over a, a large list of to do's when you were going over to setting up your covid you know the website and, and your, right. your covid specialty and uh, so like myself uh and like stephanie here you know we're solo practitioners you know funding is is sometimes on a month-to-month -month basis you know there's not a lot of loose cash or spare cash around where you can start creating websites start putting out you know new manuals and new not manuals but new brochures and highlights and those kinds of things so you know my, my question it's a it's a very it sounds like it's number one intensive labor intensive time intensive I don't know about the cost of, of doing all this stuff. I imagine you can get around a lot of it by doing it yourself and, and that kind of stuff. Um, and, and so w when you're doing this as a private practitioner, solo practitioner, again, how I want to you know, follow up with that. How, how practical is that for a, you can only be at one place at one time, you know, as a single. Well, it's really practical because the reason I did it, you know, my class, my classes are out there, I know it, but you know, I have two classes and none of them had any clients because of COVID and you know, they were worried about their business. So I said, why don't we put this product together? This wasn't, again, I do things collaboratively and they said, yeah. And so I gave each of them, you know, two procedures to do. We all worked on it together. I outlined everything and then edited everything and put it together, you know, in a product. Um, and 
what it is, it's a way to get through COVID right now and have a way to make money. So pretty much, you know, people are not thriving right now. Mm -hmm. You can use this COVID product to make more money. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, who would do it if you're a solo practitioner, which 80% are, you do that because, you know, basically it's just being a care manager or being a patient advocate and having this one thing to do. Um, and you're not going anywhere because it's done through telehealth. So it's a lot easier than having to go out and see clients and you make appointments with them. You can use Calendry. Um, you know, I've set it up so it's really easy and you've got a script. If you use the manual, it's a script. You just, you know, it's a script for every possibility of people, questions people you, you would ask. And the script contains the science because we've used nothing but really reputable sites to get the information out. And um, so it's well worth it and it converts into clients. Because again, just like I said, if you do a five-star job, they're going to use you again. So especially the long distance care providers that call you. So you're gonna get calls for ongoing services. So it, you know, it keeps on paying. So yeah, I think that's particularly, that's particularly true now in this COVID state that we're in because we're getting mixed messages across the country about how bad it is, how good it is, what it's, you know, is it up, is it down? Is it, what's the positivity rate, right? We're getting at least, uh, I'm, you know, for either from the media. So to have a, a reliable contact embedded in that community where your loved one is knowing what's going on knowing day to day right what because i'm i get uh, emails from uh assisted living facilities nursing homes telling me what their status is right because i'm a interested party of a guy of clients there so they're they're emailing me telling me we've had one positive you know one uh no residents and, and one staff positive we have you know that now the recommendation is that we're going to wait 10 more days get retested and see where we are we may open up so you're getting a lot of that firsthand information right there on the ground so i think in, in those terms it's really important to establish that contact long distance contact with a family member who's concerned about their loved one let's say here in florida Right, and they live in California. They live somewhere else, and they're concerned. You're getting mixed messages. You got governors now. You got people saying different things down here, and and I, you know, your care manager will give you the straight up about what's going on because they're right there on the scene. They're talking to the right people. They're talking the to the administrators. And they are navigators. You are a navigator. You don't do everything. You're not a doctor. You're not a lawyer, but you know the best. Right. And in this case, you know what I've given you, or hopefully what you've created yourself is really that science-based, uh, you know, health policy-based information. And there's nobody else out there doing this. So you have this great opportunity. And, you know, if you feel like you have enough in running the business, hire a social worker to do it. And all you do is you bill more than what your pay the client is paying. That's, you know, it's, mm -hmm. basic, it's, it's basic running a business. And, you know, charge a fair price. Uh, and it's a really, you know, it's worth a lot of money, really. But you can charge what you want. And, but, you know, to get them to come, like I said in the beginning, you got to do the marketing. Mm. So right, let's, uh, I'm going to keep going on. We, we do have some more questions now. So I want to <laughs> run out of time before we get a chance to, uh, to get to these. Again, Stephanie's asking, uh, could you expand on the Google My Business helping with SEO? I have Google business. I have Google my business page, but I have I haven't seen info on their help with SEO, which she's. she's uh, well, about. they say they have it, you know, with SEO words, and you know you can just check it out. And all they are is words that, uh, like you know, geriatric care managers or ALCA or you know ALCA practitioners. There are words that will draw people mm -hmm. to you. And you could get the SEO words in, you know, in other ways uh, if Google really truly is not telling the truth. Uh, but Google, you know, says that they will make that available to you. And, you know, the, the word the SEO words that are good for Google are probably good for everything. That's another reason to join uh, Alka because Alka, you know, Alka has that. That's another resource. And yeah, so, yeah, you know, if you're going to join, uh, they will give you, if you ask, and can dig through the website, um, what you need. 
There you go. There you go. Yeah, elk is a, a, a very valuable resource. Absolutely. And they have they have all kinds of stuff there on their website as well about starting businesses and operating a business and ethics and all kinds of stuff there for on on their website as well. They do. They do. And you know, I'm a hard cookie. I I'm hard. <laughs> I'm hard to please. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, because I only want the best. And you know, at times I've been critical of Cal Alka, but I think that they've done a wonderful job with COVID. Uh, with uh, COVID. And you're going to get a lot out of uh. them. All right, let's, uh, yeah, you're a ginger snap. That's what you are. <laughs> um, let's see, this is from Suzanne. Uh, do you have a timeline chart showing how you roll out your COVID-19 marketing plan, both print and online? Will it take six months, a year? You know, that's a good point, because as you were going over that, I'm thinking, how long is this going to take to get up, get running, and are we going to be sort of beyond this and, and to that? Let me follow. I'm sorry for I'm, I'm getting on uh, Suzanne's. No, but keep to here to help. <laughs> to to follow here. up with that, can this COVID once we do get over this, and I'm 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 I'm, I'm very hopeful that I know we will that we, when we get over it, can we convert this to like a a seasonal flu type of approach as well yeah. when when COVID is yeah, no quite, longer? No, quite honestly, you know, there's going to be stages of this. And it's not yeah. going to go away right away. Nobody, you're not going to have any one country get vaccinated altogether. You know that. And so oh, there's yeah. still going to be, especially with older people who are the most vulnerable, they, you know, they are still going to be getting COVID. Their children are going to get it and spread it to them. And so there's an extension of that. But then there's going to be uh, more services that you can you know, offer within that. And, um, you know, I hope to develop more of them myself and give them to you. Uh, but, you know, the other thing is it's to convert ongoing clients because if you do the five-star job, they're going to see that you're the, you're the agency to come. And, you know, if they have an older family member, they need you, especially long-distance family. So, and this gives you a great marketing plan for everything. So, so everything. is there is there a timeline chart for both you know, of the? I, I, that's a great idea, and I'll do it. You know, I will do one and add it. You know, add it to into um, the services that we have, or you know, suggest I can give one out and for anybody that that you know, develops it and wants to get it to me or, you know, gets or has it. developed it and, and right and chronologue how long yeah. it took them to do. No, I it took us three weeks. It was real is the fastest, you know, I, I wow. love to develop products and this is the fastest product I've ever delivered because we had to. And um but it's really good because we all worked on it quite 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 well. And uh, I will do the timeline. Great idea. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it was a good idea. Thank you. Uh, Patrice. Uh, <laughs> is it, Patrice, yes. Oh, well, I love that... Patrice. She knows it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Early in the webinar, you mentioned constant contact. I just started using constant contact. Do you, did, you, did you say we could use constant contact as a CRM as well? Or do we need a separate CRM company? No, no, you need a separate CRM. But you, the, the database you put into the newsletter for constant contact, you just pick up and put into the CRM database. So it's already pre-prepared. Pre That's the beauty of it. Because a CRM database is just your marketing database. Patrice knows this, but I'm set to explaining to the rest of you and that's how you you know you basically it's the marketing apparatus for all your ongoing services and uh it's the way you keep track like salesforce is one that everybody knows and salesforce for small agencies is a good one to get um but all you do is patrice and everybody else just pick it up pick up the marketing database you've already put together for the newsletter and move it over Okay, uh, so then I think that probably that probably addresses uh, Patrice your your next uh, you you rather use constant contact, but Kathy just said that we that is not what we're going to be doing. You need a separate CRM. Uh, yeah, you do need a separate. 
I mean, okay. you know, well, people get it, get to these gradually. If you're just starting, start with the e-newsletter. Um, Patrice isn't, but you, you know, if you're just starting, you know, you can't go see anybody. <laughs> the marketing database allows you to make appointments. You can't do that. So just get the uh, constant contact. But when COVID is over, you know, you will be able to go out and see clients and then you really do, do need a, a marketing database. Mm -hmm. And thank okay. you so much for coming. Thank you, everybody. And I guess that will conclude our webinar for, uh, uh, for this afternoon or evening, depending on where you are. Everybody stay safe and wear your mask. Yes, absolutely. Thank you.